back to Case Files, where we dive into our players. In today's episode, we're going to take a closer look at Jeff Okuda, the cornerback from the Lions. But first, if you do a huge favor for your boy by hitting that like button, and if you want to dislike this video, hit that dislike button. It won't hurt your boy's feelings. Well, maybe just a little bit. And if you want to share this video with your friends and foe, please do so. But also, more importantly, please hit that subscribe button. It helps out building this empire tremendously. I know you guys can do it, so thank you for that. So, on that note, did the Atlanta Falcons make the right decision in trading for Jeff Okuda, knowing that his injury history is really serious concerns because in 2020 and 2021, he's been injured and missed a lot of game time with the Lions. So, there has to be a reason why Jeff Okuda did not stick with the Lions. We're going to figure out his positives, his negatives, and maybe this is the best fit for him for the Atlanta Falcons to upgrade his career. Let's find out and see what he brings to the table. In week three against the Minnesota Vikings, Jeff Okuda had an excellent game. Now the Lions defensive scheme plays a 4-2-5 and he was all over the field. Now let me show you why. The Lions are very lucky that Kirk Cousins kind of botched his throw to Justin Jefferson, supposedly getting a first down conversion because the Lions decided not to go on a man-to-man -man coverage, more like a cover two type of coverage. So that allows Jeff Okuda not really to commit on man-to-man -man right here where he just gets beat way too quickly for Jefferson's sake because supposedly the linebacker would have stopped him. So on this play, the Vikings are going into an empty set five wide type of situation and we can clearly see that Jeff Okuda allows Justin Jefferson to get a little bit more yardage but look how everybody else is they're kind of neck and neck kind of pressed up against each other but for some reason Jeff Okuda doesn't do the same thing is it just laziness or something I just don't know this is really good man-to-man -man coverage on Jeff Okuda's part against Justin Jefferson but unfortunately it's called a flag because of the Lions uh, corner number 24 Amanue Awurwe was called for a flag so in the this amazing play. I still don't understand why NFL coordinators use zone coverage so much because they don't really stop anybody. In fact, you're allowing the offensive side of the ball to get that first down. And look at this. How do you expect Jeff Okuda to get into man-to-man -man coverage to making sure he doesn't even connect with the ball because you can't because in a zone coverage you're giving that wide open space yeah clearly I see the two linebackers are trying to cover both of those guys but there's so much soft cushion there that they're allowed to get easy pickings and then you have to make sure Jeff Okuda picks the right one there's a reason why Jeff Okuda was picked third overall because he can do this on man-to-man -man where he just literally just pushes Justin Jefferson's off balance where he can't make the connection on time. Good corners always react to the ball when they're thrown and look at right there we see Jeff Okuda's already there tackling the wide receiver without any hesitation. I think most NFL fans could agree we want nasty players on our field and that's what Jeff Okuda does bring on man-to-man -man coverage but unfortunately he does get flagged for this but I love that he has that nasty aggression of just to take down any wide receiver that comes in his domain. In week four against the Detroit Lions, I gave Jeff Okuda a bad game, mostly because a lot of things did not go his way. And then he also had to face DK Metcalf, who is 6'4 and weighs 235 pounds. And the Lions defensive scheme was a 4-2-5. So let's just dive into the video. This is going to be a pitch play by the Seattle Seahawks where they're going to use Rashawn Penny going outside and we clearly see that Jeff Okuda just stands the ground and try to figure out where to go through the tackles but then he does tackle but then he kind of gets pushed backwards. This is a very rare currency I've seen Jeff Okuda get beat in man-to-man -man coverage because DK Metcalf almost got this touchdown but luckily for Okuda Deshaun Elliott, the free safety, saved this potential touchdown. And the reason why DK Metcalf had an excellent start because you can clearly see that Jeff Okuda didn't have proper form and then DK Metcalf used his big arm frame to slightly move him over so he was sideways, not in front of him where he should have done that, where it gave uh, Jeff Okuda a much better chance of success where he doesn't go deep and almost scoring on this touchdown. On this play, Jeff Okuda is in man-to-man -man coverage going against DK Metcalf and Geno Smith throws a perfect ball to DK Metcalf where he grabs this. So unfortunately, Jeff Okuda does everything right. He's locked and loaded. He's playing by the rules. He has good form. He's absolutely doing his best job to making sure that DK Metcalf does not get a ball, but sometimes you're going against greatness. So on this play, Kenneth Walker III is going to do a crazy juke move 
thinking that he can take down on Jeff Okuda, but no, Jeff Okuda sees it and he tackles him properly. On this play, I do like the effort of Jeff Okuda trying to tackle Kenneth Walker the third down, but I don't like that he kind of slid to try to tackle him. Does it make sense? When you see Tyler Lockett going down the field, you know there's going to be a mismatch because Jeff Okuda is not set right and is not given the proper formation to stop him. Now this time, Jeff Okuda does get his individual matchup win against DK Metcalf where he's in man-to-man -man coverage, but DK Metcalf is in the slot position. But look how far spread out they are. But good thing about his quickness speed, he comes in the clutch to making sure that he does not catch the ball. In week 9, against the Green Bay Packers, Jeff Okuda had another bad game. So what do I mean by bad game? Do I mean individually wise? Or do I mean he's put in bad situations where he can't control the outcome? It goes 2-2 two and two together. And so the Lions defensive scheme is a 4-2-5 in this game so let's dive into the video. This is definitely a head scratcher for me because Jeff Okuda did everything right with his formation and the way he conducted himself with his hand motion and the balance mechanics and the flexibility he did but somehow he still lost when Aaron Rodgers threw the ball to Alan Lazar when he was uh, in a wide go route formation but I don't understand why um, Jeff Okuda just waved his hands like that so easily. Maybe Jeff Okuda just timed everything wrong. Clearly see right here where Jeff Okuda just decided to look somewhere else for that split second that really caused him this incredible defeat. I like that Jeff Okuda does a really good job in supporting the run right here to making sure that he's really down for the count. This is a good job by the Lions defenders by blitzing Aaron Rodgers so he can't properly throw down the ball farther. Instead, he has to throw it short where that means that Jeff Okuda is in a cover soft zone man where he can quickly tackle him to making sure that Alan Lazard doesn't get that first down properly. This is a really good trick play that the Green Bay Packers used on Jeff Okuda thinking that it was a run by shifting Alan Lazard to the right side, but instead when the ball was snapped, right here that he just goes into it cuts and then gets this nice crease for a wide open touchdown space sometimes i don't understand what jeff okuda is doing because he does an excellent job in man-to-man -man coverage sticking by his man samari 2a number 83 the wide receiver but then he just gets lost so easily but then you know, the good thing he does fight for the ball and he does cause a forced fumble but unfortunately it goes out of bounds and the Green Bay Packers still gets it. But look at this, he's still man-to-man -man coverage. Now he doesn't get beat too badly but then for some reason he just moves his head weirdly where he's not seeing the ball for some reason and I don't understand that. In week 13 against the Jacksonville Jaguars, I thought Jeff Okuda had an excellent game. The Lions defense scheme was a 4-2-5 and let's just roll the clips. Even though that Jeff Okuda angles wrongly and then falls on the ground, he still shows effort and hustle to try to stop Zane Jones from getting this first down. And the good news for Okuda that Zane Jones tried to catch his ball with one handed, but it comes incomplete because he doesn't have full control. So this was still good effort where you can see he's trying to punch the ball out. Jeff Okuda is going against Zane Jones in man-to-man -man coverage, and I like that even though Zane Jones is over the top on him, Jeff Okuda uses his arms to make sure that Zane Jones can't catch the ball properly. The center snapped the ball so quickly that Trevor Lawrence didn't have time to digest, so he lobbed it up to Marvin Jones, and good thing that Jeff Okuda was right there to make sure he didn't connect it. On this clip, Jeff Okuda is showing his good ball vision to look at the quarterback to make sure where he's going to hit his target, and then he pursues that target to make sure he doesn't get any grounds. At first glance, you think that Jeff Okuda blew his assignment and now sticking with his man to allow Evan Ingram to get this touchdown. But the reality is that the Jacksonville Jaguars used incredible pick play where they had Christian Kurt bumping into Jeff Okuda, so that means Evan Ingram had wide open space, so he didn't even get contested when he grabbed this touchdown. So that left Kirby Joseph to try to stop to making sure that he does not reach the end zone. On this clip, we're going to see how Jeff Okuda helped with the supporting role against Evan Ingram and trying to stop him to make sure he doesn't get a first down. In week 15 against the New York Jets, I gave Jeff Okuda a good game. Now the Lions defensive scheme was a 4-2-5 and believe me, this was a defensive game thick and through. So that meant that both sides of the party got tired really easily. So Jeff Okuda had some great moments and Jeff Okuda didn't have so great moments. So let's just dive into the film. 
Jeff Okuda's bread and butter technique when he's in men to men cover is excellent when he's going against Denzel Men where he uses his arm talents to making sure he doesn't get beat and almost get this pick. I like the patience that I see in Jeff Okuda when he's watching Zach Wilson throwing the ball to Elijah Moore and then he goes after him to making sure he doesn't convert. Somehow on this play, Jeff Okuda loses his formation instead of being a soft coverage zone, he decides to go on a man to man where it clearly it doesn't work out with him because Jeff Smith just outspeeds him to get the extra yardage so when Zach Wilson bombs this deep, this 50 yard reception, he catches it because he has wide open space where Jeff Okuda cannot make any of the proper adjustments to get him off his game. On this play, just like the previous one I just showed you, Jeff Okuda is going against Jeff Smith, but this time Jeff Okuda is going to stick by his man instead of giving him that separation like last time where he got two to five yards of separation where he can actually make a play and change his mobility to grab the ball properly, unlike this one. I call this a natural play because this could have been a great play for Garrett Wilson getting a first down or it could have been a great play for Jeff Okuda because he could have knocked the ball down but Zach Wilson threw it way too high to really know what was the outcome. Here's another man to man coverage that Jeff Okuda absolutely dominates against Garrett Wilson where he's making sure that Garrett Wilson doesn't even come close and beating him out of this coverage. This is an unfortunate play by Jeff Okuda because he does everything right. He has the high ground, he uses his formation to a T, but for some reason Garrett Wilson just uses his speed to get him a little bit more of a crease to make sure he catches this. And it just happens sometimes. No matter what your preparation is, sometimes you're just going to lose. If I was a Jets fan, I don't understand why Zach Wilson goes to Braxton Berrios. And no offense to number 10 at all for any means, but I feel like you want to give it to Garrett Wilson to making sure he can actually get this or at least try to get you guys a touchdown because Jeff Okuda was covering him pretty well with his um, uh, assisting partner. So there was no way Braxton Berrios were ever going to get this. So what is the final verdict for Jeff Okuda? Well, first off, I understand completely that he was hammered with injuries and no fault to his own. It just happened and it's hard to come back with those critical injuries he had for the past two seasons. So clearly, he was never going to be 100% accurate on his game but even still I thought he did a good job with the Lions now there clearly there's a lot of things I was not impressed with his game and I watched more than just five games that we saw today I didn't want to bore you guys way more than you guys had to I just want to know how consistent he was understanding the routes where the opponents were at and I also want to know his flexibility his time um his etchiness um the understanding of the field of the game because look when you get injured like that it, you're bound to lose a couple steps, the speed especially, and then the confident level that you knowing that you might get hurt again and will you hesitate on a dime when the player's right there. That's what I've been looking at for these other games. And also, I'm very disappointed that a lot of times that the Lions did not set him up for success a lot. A lot of times where I notice they don't really use him man-to-man -man on every single play. Now, I can understand you don't want to make sure he gets tired or he might get hurt pretty easily but even still they use him on these two deep coverage where he's not properly used as I think he could be where he doesn't get into your face because he's a press corner you have to make sure that you rough him up or at least try to break his angles so you get wide open coverage because if you don't he's gonna put you on the dirt like we've seen plenty so I think the Detroit Lions kind of misuse his skill sets because he's fantastic in Ohio State there was no, there was no denying that he was definitely one of the top five uh, players in that draft class and it showed on tape when he was in college but unfortunately I think the Lions just misused him so hopefully the Atlanta Falcons can open up the floodgate because he can be a baller for us in theory. So right out of the gate, there's already a huge bonus for the Atlanta Falcons and Jeff Okuda because he's not asked to be the true number one. That's AJ Terrell's job. What Jeff Okuda is going to do is he's going to be the number two guy to attack anybody that uh, the new defensive court needs him to do and he would do it with fine colors because he doesn't have all that pressure on his shoulders because he can rehabilitate himself so he could definitely calm down, he could slow down, he doesn't have to go all throttle because he can rely on the other players that the Atlanta Falcons have required and already drafted. So this is a huge bonus for him. So he can be flexible and just have a mind state of peace knowing that he's not being asked to do 10 times the, the business he was doing with the Lions. So that's a plus in my book. So on that note, 
If you guys watched to the very end, thank you guys for your own personal time to watch these videos. I really do enjoy making these videos. Please hit that subscribe button because they do take a long time for me to produce. So on that note, the next episode will be Drake London. So what do Falcons do? Rise up. Until the next episode, show love and peace to the world and peace.